VO Atlanta, one of the biggest, most community-minded voiceover conferences ever, and 2022 was supposed to be the closing of VO Atlanta. It was going to go away. But what happened? There was a huge announcement, and VO Atlanta is coming back in 2023. Charles Coates and I had made the decision with a lot of his urging and my wife's urging that he and I would go down to VO Atlanta 2022 because it was the last one. Well, you know what? I'm even more excited that it's not the last one now that I've gone. I got over the nerves and went. So listen, this is part two of the recap of Charles and my visit down to VO Atlanta 2022. This is the VO Life, positive conversations about living the voiceover life. Inside into the business and day-to-day grind of being a regular Joe VO. From the humble beginnings to the finally hitting a new level to getting that first big client. It's all about that VO life. Here's your host, Troy Holden. And there was also a lot of business related sessions that went on. I don't, uh, I know you and I went to some of the same things, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I went to one that uh, Ian Russell, who is stationed in the Carolinas, but he's a British voice. And he even went into, in marketing, here are the, you know, all these things you can do and here are the things you should do. But he went into a lot of things that no one else was doing. You know, we all go out there and we search for production houses and we search for this and this, this on Google. But he offered a lot of other odd things that you might not be doing. Uh, he, even down to, he puts magnets on his car. And he said, there, locally, he's gotten business from that. Uh, you know, some of the things like uh, that I'm doing as well, the, the chamber of commerce and the local networking, uh, there were classes for things like that. There were classes of breathing and warming up your voice and, mm-hmm. uh, proper vocal technique. The, I, I believe there was some either accounting or setting up your business type stuff and things like that. Did you hit some of those? So I went to, I believe it was like kind of organization and, and, and marketing, um, everything is advertisement, social media. I went to the social media class, which was really good. Um, just learning some techniques um, about your profiles. Um, should you or shouldn't you, you know, match a similar picture, you know, for, for all your different social media profiles, uh, things like that. And uh, the organization, I'm currently trying to get organized <laughs> and rewrite my notes for actually a third time uh, to make sure I get that full info uh, that I wrote down <clears throat> this, this time around, um, I actually gravitated towards and chose more, uh, breakout sessions that were, um, that were associated with, uh, acting improv, uh, and character, uh, this time around. But I actually think I should have diversified a little more to mix in more business classes, but you know, there was so many <laughs> options that th- they just overlapped, uh, that I was actually sad. I couldn't attend them all. But wait, there's more, <laughs> right? Uh, they're letting everybody that attended have access to every single class because each breakout session was recorded live for the online participants. So I know what I'll be doing. I'll be reviewing them. And, um, you know, actually, is there any that you recommend that you, you know, because you and I were in some classes, but, you know, we, we, we had our own schedules. Do you, do you recommend any that, that maybe that I must m- might have missed that, that's really a must see. I think you would enjoy Ian Russell's uh, view on marketing. And I missed all of the breathing exercise ones. I definitely want to watch those. Mm-hmm. I absolutely suck at warming up. Mm-hmm. I have a warm up routine, but I know it's not enough. Um, and, and those are the two. Yeah. Uh, Ian's take was just different and it, it's nothing mind blowing or anything, but it's down to earth and normal. And it's, and he came from a sales and marketing background, mm-hmm. uh, before voiceover. So he's using some old school stuff and it, and it works, you know, I just think that's, that's a good way to go. And, and I'm with you. I'm sure when I've got those spare hour here and there, I'm just going to load, have that thing on quick find on my, uh, my browser and be jumping in there watching stuff. Yeah, I, I think we got sure. an email yesterday. They said probably a couple of weeks. They'll have mm-hmm. it already. So yeah. that'll be great. I think, they, I think they said maybe around the 18th, uh, they should be oh, available. That's, that's given a little time. Yeah. So I'm pretty that's excited fantastic. about that because I mean, there was the good thing was there, they had so many options for people, right? Because yes. I've been to conferences yes. where it's like, okay, at two o'clock to four o'clock, it's this. And it's like, well, I don't really need that. So now yeah, I just have this. I don't need that. It's mm-hmm. like, I, I really got my money's worth because 
I was literally going from class to class, you know, between the breaks and, and hitting all the sessions up. And uh, I was, I was busy the whole time. So I really felt that they did a good job to have a, 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 a variety of, um, of classes and, and, uh, you know, techniques and, and genres and, and everything there for, for basically everybody that's there from the very, very, very beginner. Because I talked to, uh, I talked to a guy and he was there. That was his third day <laughs> or no, his third week, his third week of ever doing voiceover. And then, you know, we talked oh, to people yeah. that have been there for, it was a mix. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely a huge mix. Like you said, people that have been in it for uh, even some that had not really even started. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a lot at the, you know, the one year or six month and, you know, some where we're at as well. Um, and I know I had told you a while back, um, a long while back that I had went to this great improv class on Zoom and this mm -hmm. guy's crazy and he blew, blew me away. He's got me thinking on my feet. And I said, you need to go to this. He's here. And you're like, no, nah, I got this schedule. I said, come on, Charles, cancel. You got to go. You got to yep. see this yep. guy. What What did you think of, of the crazy Scott Parkin? Dude. All right. So <laughs> this guy, absolutely amazing guy. He's hilarious. And, you know, he, he, he talks to you and, and pushes you and, and he actually keeps you motivated and, and he keeps you motivated and it, it helps you to take that step forward and think differently about reads. You know, if I'm not mistaken, I think he said that it doesn't matter what you're reading. You're, 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 you're a character, you're acting, uh, you're improving because, you know, almost never are you your 100% self. You know, you're, you, I think we talked about it. You're usually either left or, or right of your natural self, you know, depending on how far left or how far right, you know, that's how much you're going to be pushing your acting in that particular direction for that read. And just his energy and the guy is, the guy is probably one of the funniest guys uh, I, I've ever met and probably one of the quickest, you know, I mean, he, he, he does improv and he, like he said, there's improv in everything and and I, I was, I was blown away by him also. Yeah. He was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And just um, the friendliest guy too. Oh yeah. He's, absolutely. Man, he is absolutely. Just, no matter where you saw a him. cool dude. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's a character. Um, I know some of the other things that I had interest in that I made sure I got to, and, and, uh, you were talking more about the character stuff and you focused on some of that. Mm -hmm. I went to, uh, radio imaging and promo for radio. Uh, I talked about the automotive thing, but also the middle-class VO, um, Kevin Kilpatrick and Bobby Maxwell, who have a excellent podcast. If you listen to any other, except this one, uh, we can definitely allow you to listen to theirs. It's great. <laughs> um, they, they, teach a lot about, you know, n not the national spots, not the big stuff, but they are both very well known and well respected in what they do. And then of course, we already talked about, uh, Mary Lynn Wisner's X session, which I, I still am going over my notes every time I do an audition. Mm -hmm. Um, but you add to that, there's the things that go on in the hallway as you're going from class to class, the lunches uh, where you can sit with any of these people you want to sit with, opportunities to get to know all these people after hours. We even got a visit from one of our VO Life buddies, Charles <laughs> Bain. He oh, came yeah. up from down in South Georgia to meet up with us and we had a Cajun meal. I paid for it the next day, but that's okay. It was good, <laughs> but it was awesome to get to actually hug these guys and sit down face to face. You've known them for a year or two. And, um, it was just great. All the interactions are fantastic. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, all the interactions are fantastic, but one word of advice to anybody that's going to go to a conference, right? Even if you're introvert, even if you're kind of nervous, just know that there are a lot of other people there that are nervous and have never been to one. And, oh, I don't know, like I'm just starting and I don't know who to talk to. Um, just go up and talk to somebody. And what I really liked that Gerald said was, you know, if you're, if you're talking out there and you're, and you're in between classes and you're meeting and, and this and that, and if you see somebody standing over there, just wave them over to your group. And I thought that was awesome, dude. And I mean, you know me, like I'm, I'm walking up to everybody. So um, I think that's, that's one thing I would recommend. I would highly, highly recommend is if you go to these, the, this is a place to make connections. So use that opportunity. I mean, you're paying money for this, you know, 
and and really get really get everything you can just soak it all in and then and then organize it all after because it's going right. to be a, it's going right. to be it's going to be a lot <laughs> it is a lot i know we we ended up riding back to nashville together because you had some issues getting a flight mm-hmm. and uh, hey what was that and uh charles <laughs> took me to bucky's i've never oh, been yeah. to bucky's it was awesome <laughs> but we took advantage of that five hours trying to decompress we were telling jokes we were doing whatever we had to do and i think i haven't laughed that hard in a long time especially with that one uh, bit you played for me yeah i was but afraid it, when, a, I, when i played that we were driving through the mountains in chattanooga and i was like Man, I better stop playing this off. because he's gonna crash. Because <laughs> I looked over and you're just like gasping for air, and your eyes are almost. It closed. was I'm hilarious. Like, oh. Yeah, it was. A, it, it was, was a really good time. But I, I think the the thing for me was the optimism that you know we're gonna get to go again next year now. Mm-hmm. You know, and and uh, and I want some more of that beef jerky anyway, so I can get stop at Bucky's <laughs> on the way back down. But um, th- here's the other shock, and and I think this helped me more than anything. And this is not me. Uh, blowing my horn but uh, on thursday afternoon this guy walked up to me he said hey you're the vo life guy he saw my name and i had my logo on the shirt and that was humbling i mean there's 700 people or so there and this one person who has heard this podcast uh, happened to walk up on me and i i think that gave me the confidence to think you know what that this little bit that you do somebody hears it somebody reacts to it and it meant something to somebody and i said you know what these other guys they went through this too you know they probably came to their first or second conference and they're like ah there's that guy he's back again this year i guess he's still at it and by the third year it's like hey he's back again and i I know him now he's with such and such agent and by the fourth year they're presenting you know so i kind of in the back of my head thought wonder if that would be a smart goal what if i wanted to say in 2026 I would set a goal to be a presenter, even if it's for how to break the ice in VO, something that simple, you know, what a great opportunity to, uh, you know, to pay it back. But it was kind of weird when somebody came up and said that to me, I didn't really know how to react. <laughs> I, I just and, wasn't and, sure what and to And you got to think, you know, out of those people, like they are living the VO life, right? And that's why they're there. So honestly, there's probably a lot more people that have heard your podcast and, maybe they didn't recognize you or, or they're kind of like, you know, kind of starstruck or something like that and and didn't go step up and and talk. And that's why I I recommend that you, Hey man, you, cause you do not know. I mean, some people, they don't look like their Facebook pictures or they don't look like, you know, they don't look like, you know, who you think they are. Cause there was some people that I, I missed and I, I, and I remember right. seeing them and they've messaged me and they're like, Hey man, you know, this and that and the other thing. And I was like, Oh, that was you. And it's like, Oh yeah. I was, you had the blue shirt with the, I was like, Oh, I didn't even know you don't look like you. And it's like, yeah, my, you know, my picture is different or, you know, it's their, it's a picture of their dogs or something on there. But, um, so I missed out, you know, talking to them because either I didn't go up and talk to them or I was busy talking with you know, other people and they didn't come talk to me. All right. So that's i keep i keep coming back to that point it's about connections and making those connections and 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 being and being brave right because sometimes it's yes. scary yes you know, it's a scary thing it is and you don't want to make the wrong impression you know that i think that's one of my biggest things is i don't want to be and and i'll say this this is yes it's on a podcast yes it's you and i just talking but sadly we saw a couple of people who were that person Mm-hmm. They were they were lurking. They were always right there when somebody was, you know, all the time. And whether it bothered that other person or not, they may have never noticed it. But from mm-hmm. the outside, I'm standing back watching going, that's what I don't want to do. I don't want to feel like I'm intruding or uh, I'm being an embarrassment. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be that guy. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, I'm here and I really want to learn what I can. So, yeah. you know, that, I think I walk that line sometimes and I don't want to step over and, right. and be careful. And, you know, I think so for me, it's going to this conference and going to conferences, you know, with, with a strategy and, and because I really believe it's a building process, right? Um, you know, my strategy was to go, you know, not be too pushy because as you said, you know, there was, you know, you don't, you don't want to go up to somebody, uh, and, and just you're in their face, shoving their, shoving your cards in their face, asking them a ton of questions and not letting them, you know, not making it a two way conversation. Um, and so my, my goal was not to be too pushy, 
you know, and then once I, once I get to know them, I make a connection. And then the thing is, the important thing is to build and maintain that relationship after that conference, yes. right? Yeah, because absolutely. maybe they're busy too. You know, they have a lot of stuff. Maybe they're a speaker. Uh, and of course, you know, if, if, if you're somebody in the industry or, or you're, you know, you, you have some, you know, you have some, uh, you know, work done that everybody knows about, man, everybody's mm-hmm. going up to talk to them. Right. Right. And so I, right. I really think it's, it's a building process. And the thing is build and maintain that relationship after the conference and then see them again next time. Because the next time you see them, you've met them there, you've, you've, you know, maintained a, a, a relationship, maybe you've built a relationship, um, but you've maintained their, your name in their head, in your face in their head, and what you do in their head. And then the mm-hmm. next time you see them, really solidify that connection, right? It might take, yeah, you know, it might take two or three times, but there's, yeah. there's really a, oh, yeah. a, there's really a time to, to, to make your move. And Hey, if there, if, if you feel that that time and you can, you get the, you get the vibe that that's the time to make your move. Hey, that's the time to make your move. But, but I I really tried not to be too pushy. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and I like what you're saying because you go back next year and they're like, look at there, he's back. He's made it another year. You go back that third year. Hmm. He's, he's on the right track. He's running a marathon. And and people see that. They want to see that longevity. There's a lot of people that will be there this year, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, there, there'll be a handful that will go back, and then there'll be another big bucket of new people. Mm-hmm. And it'll do that every year. And that's where those guys that are up there speaking and presenting and doing all that, they've, mm-hmm. you know, built that. And I, yeah. I think that's good. As we both are on this marathon and we're trying to build a business, we're not in this playing around. We're mm-hmm. serious about it. I know we both are. And this conference opened my eyes to some things that has me thinking very differently this week as opposed to where I was thinking two weeks ago, mm-hmm. how to strategize, how to market, how to build my business. Even my thinking about demos has changed to mm-hmm. a point. My thinking about... um auditions have changed. A lot of things have changed and we're going to see how that pays off this next year. Are, are you also thinking differently about all those things? Has it really hit you pretty hard? Yeah. <clears throat> um, the amount of auditions, um, I, I think is one big thing. The, the marketing approach, uh, that I had been doing, um, I mean, straight, <laughs> straight from the horse's mouth, literally my title when I send in my auditions, uh, to, uh, to agencies, to, to casting directors, to, uh, just to auditions, right. Uh, what I'm, what I'm naming the file and what's going to catch their, what's going to help them understand what's in it. Right. Um, uh, really auditioning techniques, really, really thinking about characters and, and, and the person that I'm, that I am during that script Right. Because it, whether it's a, a, an animated character or it's a character um, uh, for, for a video game or or even if it's a character that you're reading, you know, for uh, a, a job uh, that you get off of maybe voice one, two, three or 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 a, or a buyer request or something there, that person, that character has a life before that script in that that snapshot in time and after. And like, are you really encompassing and being, becoming that person? And that really changed, that really changed my outlook on, especially, especially character acting. Um, but I mean, just how I'm going to market, um, how I'm going to stay organized, how I'm going to adjust my social media, uh, all those things. Like it was just, it was just a wealth of nuggets of knowledge and they're just nuggets of knowledge, you know, basically tools that I put in my VO toolbox. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I I didn't really um, uh, jot this down as a point of interest, and I don't want to skip it. And I I wanted to be sure that we did. Gerald Griffiths has done a a fantastic job with this conference and probably one of the most eloquent speakers I've sat and listened to. Very real. Mm -hmm. Uh, He holds my attention when he speaks. And a lot of people don't because I'll find my mind wandering. They're just yabba, yabba, yabba. They're uh, uh, umming and uh, and this guy's so eloquent when he speaks. Mm -hmm. But when he made the analogy about the key and the lock Mm -hmm. and what you do with what you got here, was that not 
maybe. I know in my career, in all the years of automotive and everything, I don't think I ever walked out of a year-end conference, a sales conference or anything, feeling like they really spoke to me. Yeah. Gerald really spoke to me yeah. with, with that closing. I was moved. Yeah, when he, I mean, when he talked about that key, you know, and it, it, it just smacks home because that's how you feel on this voiceover journey, right? From starting to, to where you're at now, you know, we talk about the ups and downs, right? Oh, there's the good days and then there's the bad days. And the way he put it with that key analogy, you know, the, the ups and downs on the key itself, the way it's cut. You know, those ups and downs are not highs, like best times and low times. Those are things that needed to happen, right? Those are, those are, those are things that needed to take place, those ups and those downs to make that particular key fit the lock to unlock what you're going to do. And, and, you know, the same brand key could fit into different locks, but it won't, but if it's not made for that lock, though, that door, it's not going to open it. And also like the keys, you know, you have a key that's for your mailbox. You have a key that's for your front door. You have a key that's, you know, for your garage door and all those keys, there's, they're made particularly, you can't open, you can't have this one, you know, one size fits all thing to, to, to open, you know, all the doors for all those different things, because all those different things have a purpose, right? Uh, you know, your mailbox, your front door, your garage door, they all have a different purpose. You know, where, what are you going to do when you enter there? You know, what are you going to do when you unlock that door? And that, that key analogy really, really hit home. And I think it really did for a lot of people, uh, because like you said, Gerald really talks to you, you know, he could be talking to a group of 700 people in there, but I literally felt like he was talking to me. Mm -hmm. Man, it's been a blast from talking about going to Atlanta, getting there, uh, getting over the nerves, you know, yeah. watching everything that went on. I enjoyed watching you doing your thing. I, I've enjoyed the recap and I appreciate you. I really do. We're going to get together uh, again. Charles and I do some hangouts for the guys on our VO Life page at times. We let people come in and do some reads and we don't claim to be coaches, but we're trying to pay it forward and help you. You've got to start somewhere and uh, you might want to come do these things before you go to a workshop and get in front of a coach. Maybe it'll help you relax your nerves and get over some of the jitters. So be sure and look for those on the uh, VO Life Facebook page. Uh, hopefully we're going to do one Saturday um, and, and see how that comes out. Mm -hmm. You can follow me at Troy Holden Voices on Facebook, at Troy Holden on TikTok. You can join the group, The VO Life. We are both there where you can hit us up uh, if you, you know, want to ask questions. And Charles, give everybody your information on where to find you. Sure. Thanks, Troy. Um, you can visit me on my website at www.charlesthevoice.com. Uh, I'm on TikTok at Charles The Voice. Uh, on Facebook, I'm Charles, first name, last name, The Voice. Uh, try to keep them all the same. And, and my information's on there. Reach out to me anytime. And, and if you have a question or, or you want to collaborate on something or you just, just want to chat, just reach out to me. I'm a, I'm a pretty, uh, pretty easy guy to to, to get along with. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, he put up with me all week, so he's got to, Hey, gotta you put up tolerant. with me. I'm, I'm, you know, sometimes <laughs> they say I, I can talk so much that I can talk a dog off a meat line. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> man, you talked me into a bag of Oreos. That yeah. was a good thing. <laughs> I enjoyed those. All right. Hey, that's it for this week. Lifers. Thank you so much. Hey, give us a thumbs up and hit that icon bell. No, wait a minute. That's, that's YouTube. I'm sorry. I, I've been working too much lately. Hey, we'll see you guys next time right here and keep living that VO life. This was the VO life. It's over for now. Yay. Oh, aren't you all so glad? This has been the VO life with Troy Holden on Spotify, Apple, Google, and more.